Welcome brothers and sisters, welcome to a new video of Triple Grace. My name is Michael, I am the founder of Triple Grace and the Righteous Past Movement Foundation. And the topic of this video is Clouds or no clouds? That is here the question. What, fun, what kind of a question is this brothers and sisters? Clouds or no clouds? What do I refer to? Yesterday I watched a video from a good friend of mine, Ellen from Ministry Revealed, and he hinted on some points in the scripture that I want to bring forth to you through this video, and how it relates to our situation right now, and what we can expect or not expect. We see in the different Gospels of Luke, Mark and Matthew, different wordings in the account of Jesus coming in the clouds. And this is very much relevant for our time now. It is important to understand why there is a different wording used. Where are we now? Why has Jesus come to stand in the cloud? Why has he come? What is the purpose? What will be the purpose for the next time when he comes? And then the final one. You need to get an understanding, brothers and sisters, so that you know a correct timeline, that you understand how the end times are built up and that we have seven and seven, seven years of seals and seven years of trumpets. And in this 14 years, we have three events of Jesus in the clouds. So let us go inside now into the scripture and see what I'm talking about. This brothers and sisters is Luke. Luke chapter 21, verse 27. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Wait a minute. Is it not that we will all be taught that Jesus is coming in, in the clouds? Plural? Why is Luke suddenly say that Jesus will come in a cloud? And what time is it when Jesus will come in a cloud? with power and great glory. We know by now from all the teaching that we have brought forth here at Triple Grace that Luke is relevant for our time right now. The beginning of the 14 years. This is the timing now when we everything will start, when we enter our destiny to be the harvest workers. Acts 2.0 So Jesus is now standing not in the clouds, but he's standing in a cloud. And for, with, with what power and great glory he's coming. He's coming to take out the children, the escape of the innocent and the few brides. And he's coming to transform us. Now, that is the reason why I ask you the question in the, in the topic. Clouds or no clouds? What do I mean with that? The question is now, if Jesus is coming in a cloud, are we be taken into a cloud also and be transformed there? Or are we transformed into the new body in the garment of lights here on earth or in the third heaven? Because we know that the children, the escape of the innocent will go to the third heaven. So is it also possible that instead of us being transformed in the cloud, that we will be taken to the third heaven, to the court of heaven, and there we will be ordered to be transformed. That's a great possibility, brothers and sisters. We should not take it lightly. On the other hand, this is also possible, because we know when Jesus has finished taking up the children, then he will come down onto the earth for 40 days, that we will be transformed on the earth. We might still be floating in the air and it might be still be going even up to the ceiling 
and then great light will come and cover us as what I have been given by a vision long time ago. That's a possibility also. At that time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And I also believe that there's only a very few people will see it. Of course, it ch escape the children will pass through Jesus, through the clouds will go then to the third heaven. We, as a harvest workers, chosen vessels for Acts 2.0, will see him in the cloud. We know that he is already standing in the cloud that he has come. The question is only, will we be transformed in the clouds or not in the clouds? And now the answer is, it really doesn't matter, brothers and sisters. We will be transformed, we will walk with new powerful light, we will have the, a kind of Pentecostal outpouring that will give us the power and the glory of the heavens. That's the reason why Jesus is standing in a cloud with power and great glory so that he can transfer it over to the people who will be the forerunners in the spirit of John the Baptist. Going, shouting in the wilderness where the church will be taken to after they are left behind. Because the children will go and a few of the brides will go, but the majority of the churches will remain because their time of the rapture will come at the sixth year. So, if I say the, their time comes at the sixth seal, then is there not another time when Jesus will come in the cloud and is it not to be seen in the scripture also? So let's go to Mark. We know that Mark is our time of harvest, our time of preparing the way for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So when we have that one, then we should see in Mark that Jesus is coming back. Do we see it? Yes. Mark chapter 13 verse 26 Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Now we have a plural, the clouds. Thank you, Alan, that you pointed it out for all of us. Now in this clouds, what what is the event here? The sixth seal, the coming down of Mount Zion from the heavens, Jesus is not alone. That's the reason why you have clouds here. He is coming with the Father who sits on the throne. He is coming with the power and the glory of the kingdom. He is coming with Mount Zion. He is not alone. In Luke he is alone because it is he is now coming to take the children. He is now coming for the firstborn. But here he is coming now for the church. Mount Zion, rapture into paradise. Six seal, and he comes in the clouds because he is not alone. Okay, when this is the case, then we remember Revelation verse 1, chapter 7, where it says that the Lord will come in the clouds and everybody will mourn about him and everybody who has pierced him will fall on their knees. What is that all about? This is not in Mark? No, it is not. But we see it in Matthew. Now, in Matthew, Chapter 24, verse 30, we see, Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the people will mourn. When they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now he is not standing in the clouds, he is coming on the clouds. Why? Because he is coming with his great army from the heaven. He is not alone, he is coming with all the power from the heavens. He is now coming with this for judgment. And everybody will mourn. And even the one who have pierced him, the Jews, will mourn now. That is the end of the trumpets. And they are different wordings because they are different events. Clouds or no cloud? That is here the question. So this is before Armageddon. In Mark 13 verse 26 is the sixth seal, the rapture of the church into paradise. When it comes in the clouds, the Father sitting on the throne with Mount Zion. This is the time for Acts 2.0 to be raptured into paradise, for eternal life and the sealing of the 144,000. And now, 
Now, when everything begins, it's the time of Luke, uh, chapter 21, verse 27. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now he comes for the children. He comes for a few. He comes for the bride. Part of the bride goes to heaven. Part of the bride will continue be the harvesting bride who will continue to serve the Lord, who will be the forerunner for his second coming, who will bring in the harvest of the ages. Acts 2.0 Our path, brothers and sisters, where we have volunteered for, we have committed ourselves to. He has great understanding and great revelation. Again, what we talked about, three events. There is no coincidence that this ministry is called Triple Grace. Three times grace, 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 the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He has great revelation to understand that there's again three events in the clouds. And we know Jesus is standing now in that cloud right now. And any minute now, any second now, the escape of the innocent will take place. The children under the age of accountability and the bride will be taken also. A few will go to heaven and the other part will go into the harvest to be the forerunners. Acts 2.0. We have volunteered, we have made ourselves ready, we are standing on the battle lines. The time is now. The Lord has shown me and many of our warriors in this group the number 555 right now. All the time, everywhere. That is the number of provision, that is the number of fulfillment, that is the number of grace, that's the number that shows that he is standing in the cloud now and that the events will start any minute now. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, brothers and sisters, for all what he has done for us. What he has done for us, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, they all have worked great works in us so that we are standing ready now. Jesus is in the clouds. So it doesn't matter if we personally for our transformation, will now go into the clouds to be transformed there. If we go with the innocent children, all of us going to the third heaven, then at the court of heaven we are ordered to be transformed and then return to the earth. Or if we remain on the earth and maybe float just to the ceiling and be transformed there, the point is that Jesus in the cloud, with the power and the glory of the kingdom of heaven, that he takes the children and after transformation he will then come down onto the earth for 40 days and he will walk with us not through the whole 40 days i have made a video about it what do you what would what do we expect with the 40 days of jesus but he will appear to us individually and he will send us on our path he will send us out two by two on our path and the preparation for him to prepare a second coming. Like John the Baptist in the wilderness, because the church now, with the events coming up, the great conflagration that I'm telling you, the church will be taken into a wilderness, and there they will meet us. They will see the light, and they will turn to that light, and many people will clean their garments in the blood of the Lamb, and they will stand at the sixth seal. Now the mark portion of the clouds will stand at the sixth seal, at the base of Mount Zion, and there they will be raptured into paradise. Until then, great work is to be done, brothers and sisters. But we are well prepared. The Lord will, will give us the strength, the power, the resources, everything we need. And then we will move forward and we bring in the harvest for the Father. We seek the lost sheep and return them to the heavenly sheep and, and we we find the prodigal sons and daughters and return them in the open arms of the Lord. We go into the wheat field and bring in the wheat into the barn. Our time is here, finally to step forward, to do that extra work for the Lord. The final task before we are ruptured into paradise. We are ready, we have put our armors, we are standing on the battle lines. They are already starting, the people will, are already seeing your light. People are already recognizing you in your area. Because Jesus is standing in the cloud and slowly, slowly already light is coming through you now. Suddenly you will have people coming to you from nowhere. 
The time has already started. I have experienced it already here at my ministry, here in Cambodia. I have already experienced it. That suddenly people come up, I want to be part of it. Part of what? I hadn't even started yet, but they are coming forth and they are seeking it because they are guided already by the Lord. That only shows that our ministries are now so close to start. And the Lord has promised us that the ministries will run before the destruction. And the destruction, the great conflagration is coming very soon. And we will make another video about it today, about the countdown to the sun destruction. Now we could, can answer the questions. Cloud or no cloud? Does it really matter if we are transformed on the earth or if we are transformed in the third heaven or if we are transformed in the clouds as long as we are transformed and that is a promise and the promise will not fall void. Our time has come. Thank you brothers and sisters that you support Triple Grace. Thank you that you have come forth and show your love towards me. Thank you that I can return that love with an open heart to all. And I know that you will be perfect, powerful soldiers within the remnant army of kings and priests and that you will serve the Father as never before. That you will walk as an image of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ here on us as a harvesting bride, ready then to be taken into paradise at the sixth seal. I love you all so dearly and be blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen. Maranatha.